नमस्कार हमें शोक व्यास वेलकम टू दिस स्पेशल शो वेयर वी आर इन द मिडल ऑफ सेलिब्रेटिंग इंटरनेशनल डे ऑफ योगा मेनी मेनी एक्टिविटीज हैपनिंग अराउंड द वर्ल्ड सच एन एक्साइटिंग वे टू इनकल्केट द वैल्यूज दैट वुड हेल्प अस ब्रिंग आउट द बेस्ट इन अस और एटलीस्ट स्टे कनेक्टेड टू इनर ब्यूटी जॉय एंड पीस ऑल दीज वर्ड्स पीस जॉय love abundance uh, harmony sometimes they sound hollow because our mind is constantly racing and we have n number of things that are drawing our attention at the same time so is uh, meditation possible for the modern mind or it is prerogative only of those who have gone all the way up in the himalayas or sitting in some cave or have secluded themselves from the hectic pace of life that we are experiencing on day to day basis as uh, we witness many people uh, celebrating yoga by learning uh, asanas where uh, we see them moving uh, their body in certain fashion maybe raising one arm or another arm etc but how it is working on the mind we'll try to understand that uh, today with the help of our panelists we'll also try to see how if you meditate on regular basis will it have any positive impact on your state of health so let me uh, go in the traditional way and welcome uh, ladies first as they say uh, sarada chiru voluji uh, she is uh, accomplished author uh, of a wonderful book which only those who are willing to be meditative readers can actually get the juice out of that book which is uh, called home at last shala ji welcome back to our studio namaste Thank you. we had a session where we talked about decoding enlightenment and that day also a world renowned oncologist uh, was kind enough to join us and today uh, padma shri dr nuri dattatre uh, who is uh, behind two wonderful uh, temples also through his uh, Nuri Foundation he has offered to Sai devotees uh, the space and the ambience and the environment where they can go and uh, not just practice devotion but also experience the sense of love for the divine <coughs> as well as for each other so dr nuri with claps i welcome you sir namaskar thank you thank you shiv thank you and now um going away from the tradition of ladies first and asking you the first question <laughs> <laughs> uh which is uh, they they say that we should try to be in the present what has been your experience uh, why it is so difficult for people to be present anywhere um either they are in the past or in the future yeah it, you know it's difficult always you know we have so many things bombarding at us uh so it is difficult to sort out which is what is the impact of the yesterday's effect on me and what i am planning to do tomorrow you know all these uh, are uh, very complex issues so uh, sarada ji will uh, will later on outline how to live in present enjoy every minute of what we have present past is history and future is uh, not known and present is present really a present so how to be in that moment in life that i think will come to that when she explains that later so on. so le- let's not keep that for future and let's make it present the present of being present all the time how meditation helps us in uh, arriving at that mental state or that awareness where uh, we are not worried about what will happen and we are not concerned with a sense of stress about why that happened yeah meditation in general helps lot of people living in this realm of materialistic world in lot of things in general you know um not necessarily you need to attain 
enlightenment or self-realization. But meditation, doing few minutes every day can help you uh, reduce your BP and stress level, etc. The, the list goes on. You know, there are so many benefits. Uh, like medication for good health is meditation actually, you know. And keep living in this uh, challenging world. But the real purpose of meditation is actually to self-realize that divine within um, and reach that point where you can um, reclaim and reestablish the connection with the universal consciousness. Lift yourself up to to higher level where you would be able to stay in that equanimity state at all times. When you said present moment, live in that present moment. That's what happens later on. You will be able to maintain that evenness and the balance at all times once you achieve that point. So that's why meditation we encourage and everybody encourages to meditate and take it to the next level and lift yourself up, your consciousness, so that, uh, you know, eventual purpose of life is that. Why are we here otherwise, you know? What's the purpose of going through this process of life, death, coming back again? over and over and over. You want to stop that and you want, you want to experience that divine and that, that unification of everything that there is, that oneness you want to feel, to experience that oneness and the blissful state. So that you can maintain the rest of the life in this world, whatever you have to do with, with the at ease and your highest potential. That's what's simple as that. So it is no, it's difficult. Absolutely, it is as simple <laughs> as that. And uh, when Saraji says that, what is there other than this to realize the unified uh, consciousness or divinity, <laughs> etc. And, uh, and then you start thinking, no, I'm more interested in body. I'm more interested in material gains. Uh, you may not want to say that in front of uh, some people sometimes because you need to pretend to be something else in order to look good. But honestly, everybody is not uh, thinking about... Uh, being uh, enlightened, they just want to have more money or maybe more more pleasures uh, which the world has to offer. So now we talk about uh, the other aspect in which everybody is interested. Mm -hmm. You want to have a healthy body, otherwise um, <laughs> there is problem because you constantly will have to be thinking about the pain or some potential threat to your heart, etc. So, Doctor Sir, is there any correlationship uh, based on research where you see or feel or uh, understand that meditation has some positive impact on our body uh, and and people who meditate are probably more healthy yeah uh, there are <coughs> number of studies very important <coughs> question what are the benefits of yoga meditation and uh, there is a, a study is actually a, a, a website if anybody wants to go beneficial effects of yoga and meditation beyond the mat you know everybody buys that mat <laughs> if, if beyond the mat published by a Harvard group mm -hmm. what are the benefits you know as you mentioned in, uh, before happiness you know, through all the materialistic uh, positions. If you have a nice car, nice house, nice everything, these are temporary. The happiness is short-lived. Short this yoga and meditation will give you a long-standing permanent happiness. As a byproduct of that, you also have the three H, three H, health, happiness, and harmony. What is, how is the health uh, coming into picture with this? The number of studies from many, many universities. This used to be something uh, the medical fraternity did not uh, believe in in the past, but now everyone believes in that. Uh, one is the cardiovascular risk reduction. People with cardiac disease, vascular disease, uh, coronary artery disease, even they go on uh, yoga meditation methods, follow 30 minutes twice a week, and they studied a group of uh, high-risk individuals before and after. There is a significant reduction in risk with uh, following this uh, yoga and meditation. A cardiovascular risk and also the lipid cholesterol profile have come back to normal. There are a number of studies. That is, 
the good cholesterol has become higher, the bad cholesterol has dropped. LDL has dropped, HDL has increased. And arthritis, people with arthritis, you know, they, they got good relief. And then people with fibromyalgias, you know, there's a uh, very uh, complicated entity called fibromyalgia, that is continuous pains. Whatever they do, they have pains in the bone, in the, in the body, in the muscles. That is helped by meditation and yoga. And I can go on and on uh, telling you so many areas where depression, including Alzheimer's disease, as you mentioned in your book, uh, Alzheimer's disease, there is, there is uh, a, a benefit, which we haven't proved that in Alzheimer's disease, but it will come very soon. But all the others, including cancer, I'm an oncologist, including cancer, when you are adequately treated with cancer, particularly any cancer, if you follow these guidelines of yoga meditation, you know, two times a week for whatever number of times you can do <coughs> in, a, in a month, the, the well-being or the, the disease-free interval after treatment can be prolonged. That means you are putting the body in a state of uh, uh, awareness or energy, uh, energized body with yoga and meditation. So that will uh, increase the the time that any if a cancer comes back, it comes back very, very late. And uh, that even can be prevented. Those studies are still in progress. But for, for cardiovascular, lipid, depression, uh, arthritis, uh, fibromyalgia, uh, all these, uh, there, uh, there is proven evidence that uh, yoga and meditation help. In fact, in uh, our modern medicine, uh, cardiac rehab, there is a yoga and meditation part for rehab. And for stroke rehab, there is a part of yoga and meditation. <laughs> now is, is now we are integrating, you may call complementary medicine or whatever name you use, but we are integrating the benefits of all these known entities, yoga and meditation, into our routine practice. There are so many examples of that. So this is not something uh, we can easily uh, write off. This, there is something, and as a physician, as an Indian, uh, I strongly believe uh, that this is one of the greatest uh, gifts India is giving to the mankind. So, greatest gift, gift uh, that India has given to the mankind, but are we actually uh, accepting that gift ourselves? Because this, <laughs> this is a two-way gift, it is not just... Uh, a static gift, it's a dynamic gift. So if we don't practice, it is there, but it's not there for us. Uh, in order for this to be actively working for us, we need to make use of our mind <laughs> in a way that it works for us. So let me uh, ask Sharada ji, when we say in order uh, for you to be meditative, you your mind should be still. It doesn't, it doesn't <laughs> happen. Many of us are not even aware as to what is it that we refer to as mind. So kindly tell us what is mind and then how to attain stillness of mind. <clears throat> it's not easy. Believe me, it's not easy. Even for me, it wasn't easy at the beginning. It just happens when it's correct time, when one is ready to attain or when it is your body, mind, intellect has reached a certain maturity state, it automatically converts our state of mind to become tranquil. But that takes time for some. Uh, that's why we need practice, a lot of practice, a simple meditation, five, ten minutes to sit there and do that. Mind is something that troubles us in this materialistic uh, life that we're leading, you know, with a, uh, what the senses control us constantly, you know, with, uh, with so many desires and this and that and, you know, constant rat race it's going through. So we need to calm the mind with practice. That mind will continuously throw uh, thoughts, continuous thoughts about past, present, future. You need to meditate and come to a point where you can um, calm the turbulence of the mind. But that takes a lot of practice. 
So we shouldn't get discouraged because of it. We, at least five minutes, if you make it a habit, it's like a little kid, you know, it's like monkey mind. M mind is so, it moves around so much. It, it, it has to be taught how to focus on that one point in, in your uh, concentration. It's a matter of concentrating and matter of uh, taking that uh, into that center of your uh, mo uh, point where you can focus and give your utmost concentration, at least for two minutes, and then increase the time as you go along, five, 10, 15. And that'll become a habit for the mind. Oh, I'm supposed to go there and stay there. It's just like a little kid, you know, when you say, stay there. Eventually he learns to learn, you know. That's how the mind is as well. It moves around all the time, so you have to train it, continuously train it. And in course of time it will become, and it'll go to that point. And that's why when I used to meditate, my most of my meditations were uh, focused in the middle of my uh, two eyebrows, Agni Chakra, where the uh, will and the concentration power is more, where the center for the focus is more. It's a command center, that's what we call it, you know. So where you can, um, I know a lot of people think that they can focus in the heart or someplace else or whatever. The best way to meditate is our old way of saying Raja Yoga. Raja Yoga is, emphasizes the uh, focusing and concentration on the Agni Chakra, where the command center is, where your turbulence of thoughts will reduce faster than other places. Okay, Shadari, um, some of us, uh, when they hear Agni Chakra, we find it difficult to actually process it in the way where we can actually put into practice. So, focusing on Agni Chakra means what? So, I close eyes and then, uh, I mean, is there no, anything, anything yeah, else? Yeah, yeah. When I say Agni Chakra, it's a, uh, you know, you close your eyes gently and put all your focus and concentration one object. You know, focusing on centering on an object. It could be a light, it could be a, a figure that you're, uh, that you're used to or divine uh, photo or what, what have you. It doesn't matter, but focusing on that particular point in the center of two eyebrows, that's what I meant. I mean, you don't have to worry about uh, what chakra there is there, nothing like that. It's focusing and, and concentrating in one place always. And so eventually the body and the mind will get used to uh, being that way. It will go to that point with practice. That's what it's all about. Practice is the one that you have to keep doing. So it's like a, a monkey mind, like I told you. Then uh, all of a sudden, in course of time, the mind will learn uh, to go to that point, you know, because you're always putting your concentration on that direction, on that point of object. So put your concentration on that point or that object. And if you are Prime Minister Narendra Modi, and if you put your concentration on making the whole world aware, about the benefits of yoga and you propose this uh, <laughs> May United Nations declare a day uh, to observe International Day of Yoga and that happened 21st June again coming this will be the third time that uh, the whole world would be celebrating uh, International Day of Yoga many many countries and this is remarkable this is amazing this is like a festival whereby Everybody is focusing on increasing not only their personal happiness, but also increasing harmony and contributing towards uh, a little bit more peace in the world, which is, of course, very, very much needed. So, uh, thanking uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi for coming up with this idea. And today, as uh, we are talking, just a few minutes uh, ago uh, at Indian Consulate here in New York also, uh, this uh, was observed and due to heavy rain, uh, the venue was uh, shifted from a park to the premises of Indian Consulate's office. We had uh, this weekend uh, wonderful celebration of International of Yoga in Washington, D.C. with the Mr. Navtej Sarnaji and indeed we'll get many, many news. But uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has been proactive in giving a protocol of how to observe International of Yoga, Day of Yoga. So we have this uh, small clip from the way he talked about the benefits of uh, practicing yoga. Take a look. 
हर कोई चाहता है तनाव मुक्त जीवन हो पीड़ा मुक्त जीवन हो बीमारी से मुक्त जीवन हो प्रसन्न जीवन हो इन सबको अगर किसी एक मार्ग से पाया जा सकता है तो मार्ग है योग का एक संपूर्ण जीवन को संतुलित रूप में कैसे जिया जा सकता है तन से मन से विचारों से आचारों से स्वस्थता की अंतर यात्रा कैसे चले वो अगर अनुभव करना है तो योग के माध्यम से अनुभव हो सकता so he talked about how to live a balanced life he talks about uh, stress free life and also how yoga helps in sustaining and realizing happiness happiness and health go together as dr nuri said already um, mm-hmm. we are what our habits are many times as a physician you come across patients who have different set of habits and with some you probably feel that they are being friends for them so some of them are not um, really <laughs> friendly because uh, they end up uh, not observing what is told to them in terms of their eating habits etc so what what is it that as a physician um, you you can suggest them in addition to the prescription that is there a uh, good question again uh, shukji uh, yoga and meditation uh, will have great impact on everybody it improves uh, the body image first they they feel good about themselves because they will be less interested in what is happening around more interested in, in inside so their body image will improve and the stress level will go down they will be tranquil you know they are they are not uh, disturbed by ups and downs so their whole attitude towards life changes as sarada ji has mentioned so these are a uh, benefits of yoga and meditation which now are being incorporated on a regular basis into modern medicine and yoga and meditation as i know a little bit i'm i practice not very regularly but i do know a little bit about that has uh, something for everybody <laughs> something for everybody mm-hmm. as sarada ji said that is if for people you know who wants to relax their muscles and all that these asanas starts with asanas they will relax the muscles you know they feel good about themselves and then the pranayama we inhale and exhale of air ink improves i read all this from her book improves the pranic power in the body so every single cell gets more oxygen more energized so you can <coughs> you can have a a step 1 step 2 step 3 the final step which most of people like her will go through is is it it can be used for self realization so from beginning of just muscular relaxation to pranic energy ch- charging the pranic energy to mental alertness acuteness all that to final salvation like vivekananda aravind yog and including sarada ji mentioned in her book so find out where you are what purpose you are in addition to all this self realization higher higher advantages you get these three health happiness and harmony these are these are uh, given as you practice so if you go to next higher levels you practice more and more as she said and as vivekananda said this is a uh, one mantra where your all your previous uh, births and deaths can be condensed and get a salvation in one life by following going to step 5 all the way in yoga and meditation we most of people like me are in step 1 and 2 and 3 maybe so uh, as i mentioned in my last interview sarada ji is at step 
five and six, highest level. So all she has gone through all this and she has uh, realized the real advantage of all this process is self-realization. That most of us, you know, you know, day to day, you know, having uh, to practice in day to day life in medicine and other uh, activities, uh, we may not reach that level, but the other byproducts, advantages are profound for all of us. So, talking about the byproducts and talking about happiness and uh, Dr. Nuri, uh, because he said he has practiced a little bit, he probably <coughs> mentioned about stage one, two, three. We think I am actually not aware about all these stages. All I know is I am happy if I, eat, if I eat ice cream. <laughs> and some of us are clear that uh, pizza actually makes me happy. So, leave aside all this uh, and just let me have a mm, fresh pizza or samosa, whatever it is. So, food actually helps us in being happy. Whether um, Dr. Nuri and Shadaji <laughs> agree with it or what, food does make us happy. But those who uh, recommend meditation, they also are aware that food has something to do with our practice of meditation. And what is that something, Shadaji? Uh, is there any direct impact of the kind of food that we have on our mind and it affects whether we'll be able to meditate or not? Definitely, it does. It does. I'm afraid to say. <clears throat> what we eat is what we are, actually. What we take in, it reflects how we feel and how we act and how we deal life in general. So, if you eat rajasic type of food, non-veg, this, that heavily, you become more, your nervous system starts acting strange and at times you're very hyper and, you know, all sorts of things reflect back you know with the food that you're eating but if you're sattvic food you know very vegetarian very fruits vegetables you know limited amount and certain types of foods that gives you uh, easily digestible items which will restore your energy to do meditate better you know will not interfere and you're using most of your energy you don't want to use most of your energy in digestion that's the main purpose it's not to do to religion that you don't want to eat meat or this that you know it's m more in my case how I feel is that it's what is your system can handle and save and conserve that energy to uplift yourself the meditation requires a lot of energy to uplift yourself that's why a lot of people don't like to sit and sit still and meditate because it uh, requires so many thick conditions you know you need to eat you cannot eat you cannot you know, drink too much, you cannot do this, this, this. So, so many things you have to uh, maintain to, for meditation. And food is one of them. You cannot eat food uh, and start meditating because it will make you lazy and lethargic and uh, sleepy. That will just demean the purpose of meditation to begin with. So, you have to reduce your intake, first of all, and you can't eat so much to, a, to the point where you feel sleepy or, or tired that you don't want to even bother with meditation. So what good is that? So food has a lot of impact on you. Like when I was going through my way uh, when I was meditating and became a meditator, I used to always stay with simple food. At times I used to wait, if I had any food, I used to wait four hours before I even meditated. It should fully digest. and your system empty so that uh, you're alert and you're focused your concentration is better otherwise what's the purpose of all this you know so you have to pay attention to your food pay attention to your food and then when we pay attention to what Shadaji said we pay attention in our own way she said pay attention to your food and we say okay I'll eat more <laughs> I'll eat more because uh, eating food and getting into a sense of a sense of a kind of trance you feel little sleepy. We say that is also meditation. Though we are fooling ourselves, maybe that is not that really meditation, but maybe for some time that makes us happy. And uh, we'll be happy if you stay with us after this short break. Break Because uh, Sharadaji said that meditation requires a lot of energy. And I, on the contrary, was thinking that meditation gives energy. So, where is this um, contradiction between uh, these 
two thoughts we will talk to dr nuri also right after this short break stay with us welcome back you watching inside one of the show guys today we are talking about meditation and modern mind modern mind hum sab ka hai modern era mein reh rahe hain computers smartphones स्मार्टफोन को यूज़ करते हुए हम ज़्यादा स्मार्ट हो रहे हैं या नहीं हो रहे हैं इस सवाल को छोड़ देना चाहिए बिकॉज इफ इफ यू वॉन्ट टू मेडिटेट प्रॉब्ली यू हैव टू स्टे अवे फ्राम द टेम्पटेशन ऑफ लुकिंग एट योर फेसबुक अपडेट एंड ट्विटर एंड ऑल दो थिंग्स एटलीस्ट फॉर सम टाइम सो देर आर एडिशनल चैलेंजेस फॉर अ मॉडर्न माइंड वेन even if they think about meditation there is a notification ting and then, then you end up going there so uh, dr nuri we uh, talk a lot about being positive in life and before i uh, request shada ji to help us uh, learn the steps of meditation do, do you see there is a correlation between a positive mindset and our ability to meditate i think positive mindset helps in every area of activity including meditation especially you know people with a positive mind they tend to progress much better than someone uh, who has uh, uh, a negative attitude about everything uh, so b- b- positive mind uh, i- is uh, i think to the, the very first step if you want to make a prog- make progress in any in any area in any area and i tell my uh, my students uh, you know the glass half empty half po- you know half full theory uh, i tell them always think a glass is half full don't stop there but you have the power to make it full <laughs> so that is the extreme positive feeling that carries you to all kinds of uh, successes uh, in profession in personal life including in uh, spiritual life uh, so uh, in some of the books i read you know people say uh, swami ji is you know and the leaders spiritual leaders try to keep away from people who are continuously feeding negative thoughts into mind it does they they cannot issue anything they will not allow others to issue anything so a uh, positive mindset is, is a critical number one step critical number one step positive mindset are we born with positive mindset or we can do something about changing our mindset and uh, one thing that we can do as dr nuri uh, generously shared the tip is that stay away from people who keep on thinking negative as well as make you think negative that's also not possible all the time so now um, chala ji with the problem of not having positive mind first then uh, meditation is almost impossible or there is something that one can do to sort of work on being positive uh, that is one question and secondly how to meditate Well, I'm going to start saying first you need to have 3 Ds. 3 Ds: dedication, discipline, and devotion. Without that, nothing is going to happen, right? Devotion is the primary prerequisite for, med- for meditation actually. If one is uh, dedicated and devotional, could be ritualistic or anything, he's thinking about you know reaching higher states of consciousness that means you know he's into that at least so and discipline is very important you know if you're not disciplined and you prioritize your time and you give some time to set aside to meditate uh, it won't work i mean uh, attitude positiveness yes it it's it makes a difference but all those come with these 3 d's right if you're devoted if you're disciplined if you're dedicated the positiveness and the intent will come along you know to to take you there so that's very much needed so now what is needed is that we read some books which fills us with positive uh, ideas and thoughts and we are relating to the uplifting side of life um, and as i am holding this book home at last 
uh, author is sitting here with me and this is a journey towards higher consciousness and in this book also while um, we hear we read about uh, self discipline in the chapter where uh, shadhi you are talking about focusing the mind uh, you have written training the mind produces a positive transformation eliminating the mind's defective qualities while improving those that are desirable what we invoke from within ourselves makes a difference so now help us how <laughs> we can uh, be um, capable of invoking positive ideas well what i meant by saying that sentence you just read uh we need to change ourselves the relation you know the friends we make or wh- how we keep our life in general you have to sort of see what works for you you don't want to indulge yourself with all these activities like you're saying before with tv wrong television shows or that disturb your mind you need to keep mind limited because mind absorbs so much it's like a monkey mind it, it takes every single thing that senses are driving toward right so you want to eliminate most of the things which i have done in my practice i completely shut off i did not associate with people that are negative or or giving you in their input or you know socializing actually we spent so much time in socializing unnecessary chit chatting unnecessary uh indulging ourselves with conversations that are really not needed you know and so i used to actually never socialize that much where it's not of something value added for me you know i used to eliminate that I never used to indulge myself with the modern te- uh, cell phones, this, that, TV shows. Stop all that because they have such an impact on your brain, such an impact on your mind. They will cause turbulence. They will cause because what you see is what you reflect back constantly when you're meditating. They may come back, you know, haunt you. So you need to eliminate a lot of things. You have to prepare yourself for all these things. things just don't happen just like that you have to be conscious of what you're doing if you are want to really become a good meditator you have to start doing all these things otherwise it's no use that's what i think but I, when i did it that's how i did read my book it's all there how i practiced diligently every day how i really took care of my body my my inner self uh so it will give me more pranic energy you know when you meditating you absorb a lot of prana and prana is not oxygen prana is what sustains our life and vibration it for such a high vibrational state you will become where it is every single cell is active active and harmonizes itself in the body and like dr nuri was saying it uh, is a sign the more prana you have the healthier you are so all these come about only when you're discipline yourself to do unnecessary things you have to eliminate throw them away for the time being until you attain that state where you have to be at you know simple. so discipline <laughs> and simple when she <laughs> says uh, you feel like loving she loved also it is not easy to be uh, disciplined i think yeah. for most of us maybe it is for some but dr nuri again as a physician uh, if you tell us something about uh, what we have heard is um, even if it is the same uh, disease but two patients with different mindsets will have different outcome even if they are treated by the same uh, physician and they are given the same uh, medicine so uh, they say he survived because the, he is a strong willed person no how this <laughs> this strong will uh, plays out uh, medically biologically uh, in, on in human body uh not in one particular example uh, you know people with overweight uh were randomized you know one group just treated with routine treatment the other group group received yoga and meditation as a part of the routine treatment <coughs> this group with yoga and meditation has a faster progress in weight reduction well being tranquility peaceful mind than the other group 
So what is that causing the neuroendocrines uh, kicking in the brain that is calming them down, that is making them self-disciplined as Sarada just said. All these are happening because they were able to concentrate, they were able to contain all their thoughts and process them into a single channel. So that greatly helped them to recover and produce results. Then the other group who you know, did not receive yoga and meditation. There, there are a number of studies like this. This I just gave an overweight example. But cardiovascular risk reduction, there are very well done studies. Uh, people uh, who, are, who have coronary artery disease, if they go on disciplined diet and yoga and meditation, mm -hmm. and you do a coronary angiograms following uh, you know, two, three years of uh, this, uh, uh, this uh, process, their angiograms came almost normal. The doctors could not believe. So there is a profound effect of uh, mind and body, whatever you call that, but uh, yoga and meditation on whatever uh, 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 neuro secretions we have uh, that are controlling the body system. I smile and <laughs> I'm told <laughs> that smiling helps us in staying healthy or <laughs> at least staying in <laughs> harmony. And uh, is it true or not? I'm not going to ask you, but I'm going to ask another question to Shalaji, which is related to uh, the term that you must have heard many times. If you hear a uh, few terminology of uh, yoga, meditation, yogic practices, there is one word, Kundalini. Some of you are aware, many of us probably are not aware of what is the meaning of Kundalini Jagrat Hona, ya Awakening of Kundalini. So I'll read two lines from Shadaji's book and then uh, we'll seek her input on this. The experience of awakened Kundalini varies greatly from one individual to another in both its positive and negative aspects and the way it affects the person's perception. This inner energy exists in all of us in its latent form. It is not the exclusive property of only a few but becomes apparent only after it has been awakened. Now, what are you talk talking here, Sadaji? <laughs> and for a layman, what is the significance of knowing a little bit more about Kundalini? And then you also say that it affects positively and negatively both. Can you? Yeah, Kundalini explain? is um, <coughs> dormant energy that is we all have. It just sits there until. Individuals are ready to, to get that experience of knowing that divinity within. In other words, if a soul is ready to reclaim its connection with the, with the universal consciousness, then the Kundalini will come and help you. Kundalini gets awakened, it's just nothing but energy, extra energy that's just sitting there in our Muladhara chakra, the bottom of the, our body. And it, to be experiencing that so-called enlightenment or realizing your divinity within, you need so much energy. The little consciousness we have, or energy, pranic energy we have, is not enough to lift ourselves up to that point where it reaches that universal consciousness. So you need that extra kundalini energy so it automatically knows which soul is ready to attain the experience. Therefore, it awakens, meaning it's helping you. Within the self, it gets awakened, and that awakening is what everybody talks about. So-and-so is awakened, so-and-so is awakened, kundalini is awakened. What does that mean? That means this particular individual follows the correct discipline and dedication and intent is so strong, he will reach that point of enlightenment or experience that unification of everything that I had talked about before. So that Kundalini energy, uh, the process itself, uh, purpose is to help the soul to go back. Uh, it's like a 50 watt bulb as opposed to 200 watt bulb. You know, that much energy is there within the our system. Therefore, there are some issues may come about for each individual during that time, facing a lot of impact on your nervous system or our digestive system or body 
is used to a certain amount of energy to begin with. When you're giving this extra force and extra energy that had awakened within you, it naturally uh, is going to cause problems initially for individuals that are meditating, you know, to reach that point. So that's what I was talking about when I explained in, in my book. Uh, I had gone through, while well, I was going through the journey, uh, I couldn't sleep properly and the, the heat generation was to a point where there's so much heat generates itself because of the energy is there, so so much energy. But all these things will subside as you progress. So it has, divine has ways and has gadgets within us to sustain us properly eventually. You know, it, it's a temporary uncomfort, temporary issues, depending on the constitution of each individual. It varies, you know, how much impact it has, but it'll be okay eventually. And that's the purpose of Kundalini is to help us out, to uh, give that extra pranic energy. That's what it's doing actually. And that only will awaken only if you're ready to be experiencing that. Uh, reconnecting to the source back and learning the truth, you know, of life. Otherwise, it won't happen. So there is a mysterious element always. It will happen only if you are ready. Now, you are ready or not, who would know other than you? So ultimately, it is you who is uh, making everything happen. Indirectly, we may say that everything happens for you because you want it to happen. If you would not want it, it may not happen. Uh, Dr. Nuri, working as a physician and also uh, interacting with the spiritual dimension of life, uh, sometimes when people have strong desire to do something, then their recovery is faster. Uh, and sometimes if there's no purpose or there there is nothing uh, which motivates them to work on their body and mind to recover have you observed that and so uh, let's go to another uh, related aspect do you see uh, down the line our modern medicine will incorporate an element of understanding of the spiritual aspect of human beings? I think if, if it, not immediately, but eventually it will incorporate. Uh, as you mentioned uh, before, uh, a positive attitude uh, and motivation on the part of the patient that he wants to be, I want to become normal. And these things are certainly helped by uh, there is all-round help by doing yoga meditation. All-round help, what I mean, it's not my definition. It's uh, Aravind or Vivekananda gave. It's all-round help means you will benefit physically from this, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. There are so many benefits of doing this, as uh, Sarada just said. So eventually, maybe, you know, in, maybe in due course of time, when more and more people understand uh, the real clear-cut benefits of yoga and meditation, they will incorporate that into medical education also later on. So in the medical education, um, or rather experiments, as we heard from Pandit Jasrajji, sometimes some classical ragas also helps in healing faster. Uh, so mantras definitely have their own healing power and uh, the yoga, International Day of Yoga related protocol which was uh, released by Prime Minister or other government of India, it also uh, have some um, mantras uh, in the concluding part of it and we picked up this one for you. Let's take a look. Kina. <laughs> 
Beautiful Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. May all beings be happy. Now, Shadi, in order for all beings be happy, we need uh, clean uh, environment <laughs> around us. And uh, from the point of view of meditation, what is the role that natural elements like earth, sun, water, wind, etc., plays? Why roles? Um, I would say. Um <clears throat> being outdoors environment uh, is part of you actually the same energy they carry as we embody this form whereas the nature embodies trees and greenery and etc right so we all have the same pranic energy within within every manifestation so being around outdoors and in that lush of greenery or ocean side they emit such a highest amount of cosmic consciousness uh, energy they they radiate so you you become part of that and that puts you in a state in a level where you're calm automatically and, and at ease you know so i think the environment has the most highest impact on us rather than sitting indoors always people should just go out spend some time by gardens by greenery i i used to meditate all my meditation were done outdoors only never inside unless it's catastrophically bad or the days when there's terribly a lot of snow, et cetera. Uh, I used to meditate indoors, but normally I prefer meditating with my colleagues. I call nature is my friend, you know? I sit there and they help you actually, uplift you, you know, when you're meditating. You go to the higher level easily when you're outdoors. You know, um, <coughs> when you say outdoors, um, some people think it's boring if they have nobody to talk to. <laughs> so you get there, the, you are saying they are my friends. So um, how can one work on making them one's friends if uh, you go there and you start thinking, oh, there's no activity, what am I going to do here? That's a good question and good, uh, good point. Um, I think that depends on where we, one is in their evolutionary journey to, to be able to appreciate the nature to be able to be wanting to be out there. We all are evolving at a certain pace. So not everybody is ready for that type of uh, way of thinking, where they will capture that kind of uh, interest and, and become, you know, uh, consider that as a positive aspect for them. So you have to wait until that their evolution, we're all evolving and it takes time for everyone uh, to reach a certain point where they'll appreciate a lot more than uh, who is already there, you know. Uh, perhaps, uh, I'm not saying uh, I never knew uh, all these things at all as I was growing up, but somehow I was led into these scenarios where I appreciated the nature always. Perhaps it's from my uh, previous experiences in last life. We don't know. This cycle goes on, remember? Each cycle or, or reincarnation that the, we call it as, but I call it cycles, of experiences, there is a time when um, we probably are in tune with those type of things. Even a meditator, if you didn't finish in your last life, you come back and uh, continue that. So That's how it happened to me. Absolutely. So probably we'll continue <laughs> this some other time. <laughs> Reaching to the point where we'll be uh, thanking our panelists as well as all of you. But uh, Dr. Nuri, in 30 seconds, <laughs> people say I have no time to meditate. Uh, what would you tell them? Find time. Find time. Uh, right. Because the, the advantages are incredible. Uh, you can uh, uh, do it in your uh, living room or an ashram in India or in Times Square. These, uh, you know, 
as Sardar said, five minutes, ten minutes, you have to find time because the advantages are incredible. So, advantages are incredible and as uh, meditation is like seed, if you plant a seed of time for meditation, you will have uh, additional time for other activities. That is the impression I gather from Sharada ji who wrote uh, this wonderful book, Home at Last, and shared all the valuable uh, secret sort of steps that led her to her enlightenment. And Dr. Nuri, such a pleasure. Thank you. For having Thank you. Thanking them and thanking all of you with lots of gratefulness for all that is around us, which is helpful in uh, leading us towards uh, meditation.